morning and welcome to Heritage Church this morning. We're so glad that you're here with us. Can we give Jesus another hand? Will you do that? <clears throat> Man, I just spend this morning, it feels like I just feel God calling to a, just, I just feel this, I don't know how to say it, but just this wooing inside of saying surrender, surrender. Man, I pray that <laughs> that spirit be with us all. I pray that we go home and that no matter where we're at today, no matter what we're doing in the week ahead, that when we find ourselves in the opportunity for God, that we would have just a simple spirit that just said, Lord, I surrender. Here I am. Use me. Do what you want to do with me, whether I'm paying the cashier at Walmart or checking out on my own. Okay? Like, whatever it is, God, use me. And so we're glad to have you here with us today and so thankful for the spirit of the Lord in this house. And we want to get ready right now as an act of worship. If you're a guest of ours, we release you from any pressure of giving. We do believe as believers that this is just an opportunity to worship God and say, hey, we want to share the things that you've given with me. I want to share them with our local church, and I trust that they are sharing with our community and uh, our nation and the world. And speaking of the world, I am thankful that we've got some of our very own homegrown missionaries here with us today, Drew and Kate, um, and their beautiful daughters and brand new son. I think I was told they were here in this. Is that you back there? Drew, you look so much uglier from a distance. I, I can't. No. <laughs> Most people look better, you know. <laughs> no, I, I, I have really, really gotten to know Drew a little bit on the pickleball court, and he is a fierce competitor, and I love, but it, I just sense there's such an amazing sense of worship that comes out of his heart, and you know he's a man that's after God. And so we're so thankful to have you guys home with us today. And uh, and, and other family members that are home for the holidays. It's good to have uh, family come home and get to see um, people getting a little bit older. And uh, Gail, I'm just moved <laughs> to worship. I see Gail Holloway here in the front and where she's been this week and uh, the last week or two fighting and had such an incident. But here worshiping God today, Bob and Gail, I honor you guys. I just want to say we've been praying for you. We love you. And uh, I'm so thankful for the hand of God that walks with us always. Amen. So God is good, so I want the offering team to get ready, and we'll get ready to uh, receive the offering. And so as we do this, I just, I just want to say thank you. I am one of my roles here as the executive pastor, and so I see all things behind the books. And so uh, it's just a privilege to watch the, the people so open-handedly say, here's what I have to offer the church. I want to offer this to missions, and I want to offer this to this family, and I want to help this person. And you have been and are one of the most generous groups of people I've ever encountered. So I bless you for that. Thank you for helping us finish 2023 strong. And uh, who's excited that 2024 is just a few weeks ahead? Can you believe it? <laughs> Whoo, man, God is good. I hope you're ready because it's coming. It is coming. So um, thank you for helping us finish strong uh, 2023 and launching us into 2024. So let me pray. Father, we thank you today for all that you've done. We just bless your name. Thank you for family and friends and uh, for those that you have brought home for us to see during this time. And thank you uh, for, for keeping your hands on those that we love, protecting us, God, keeping us uh, for tomorrow and your purposes tomorrow. And so, God, we take and we bring this offering to you and we pray that joy would fill our hearts, God, that joy would be in our souls as we offer it to you, God, as we uh, lay it at your feet. Uh, we say use it, God, for your purpose and your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so as the offering team comes, I just want to remind you of a couple of things. Um, this Sunday was baptism service. We baptized a young lady named Bree uh, in first service. And so maybe you're here, you'd like to get baptized. You can go to heritagelife.org and sign up for that. And then I uh, want to remind you that next Sunday, people ask us, we generally have a Christmas Eve tradition uh, where we do communion and those kinds of things. And so what are we doing this year? That's what we've been asked. So next Sunday, we're having our, our normal service times. We'll be meeting right here for Christmas Eve, having our normal Sunday. And we do plan to have communion within the service as well. So make sure you come and worship with us as we celebrate Jesus coming. And so I'm going to ask the Gonzalez family to come now. We have a, a we participate in our following this month, the Advent calendar. And so uh, in the last two weeks, we started with hope. We lit the candle of hope and uh, lit the candle of peace. I'm going to go ahead and light these candles. How about that as they come? Thank you, guys. Good to see you, brother. 
And so we, today we're going to light the candle of joy. The Gonzalez family is going to help us do this. And it's a, a simple but profound act. It's a testimony to the power of light over darkness and that Jesus is with us and he's overcome the world. And so go ahead if you would. Thank you. As we light this third candle of Advent, we continue our journey to Christmas. The third candle of Advent is called the Joy Candle. As we anticipate Christmas, let us remember the good news of great joy that is found in Jesus, our Redeemer. The word of the Lord as prophesied by Jeremiah. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. Simeon and Anna, may, like many others, wanted a, waited a long time for the coming Messiah, and they were filled with joy when they met the baby, the boy, Jesus, at the temple. But John the Baptist was filled with joy the, about the coming Messiah, even in the womb. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Uh, and that's Luke 1, 39 through 45. And when Jesus was born, the angel declared that it was cause for great joy. Luke 2, 8 through 11. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Let your fool my last that true joy that true joy comes from trusting in God. Comes from trusting in God. Comes from trusting in God. <laughs> all right. Um, Romans fifteen thirteen, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is the true source of our of our hope, peace, and joy in this season and for eternity. Amen. Give it up for the Gonzalez family again. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, light the candle. Let's light it. I love our families. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Yeah, go ahead. One more time. I read where uh, in some traditions that the third candle can be, they'll, they'll change it to the color purple or pink uh, as signifying joy. And so I wore me a kind of a purplish pink shirt. Anybody see that? Kelly told me when I got up and put it on this morning, she said, you don't match. And I said, I do today, ma'am. <laughs> you don't tell me what to do around this house. 
This, we're, like, we're like in the third Advent, okay? <laughs> so I love this. Uh, this is not something, the Advent candle is not something I grew up with, but I've experienced here at Heritage, and so I love the, uh, what it actually teaches and it does involves our families and brings us together. And so what a, what a time-honored tradition of the church to be able to one more, another way, point toward Christ, amen, and the joy of the Lord. And so this morning, I'll just go ahead and tell you, they've actually preached my message. They got all my almost all my verses. I got one or two. You're probably going to hear some of them again. So if you had to go, you could leave. I mean, I'll try not to be upset, okay? <laughs> but if you need to go, I'll just high five you. We'll give you a little air five and say, bless you. I know you want to beat the uh, folks at the restaurant. It's all right. So, um, but today I just want to share for a few minutes, just to, as I was getting ready uh, this week, just, you know, we moved to Durham and we're enjoying it, loving it. Uh, it's, it's been different. It's a different kind of quiet. But one morning I was getting up, I was getting ready, and I heard the train blowing, you know. And I don't know, if it was blowing at 5 a.m., a person could get tempted as to, hey, how many times you want to blow that horn, you know. People are trying to sleep, you know, <laughs> so, uh, but I was thinking about that, and I was like, man, a person could really get aggravated with that, but then I got to thinking, I looked at Kelly, I said, what if you was a little girl, and you'd had run down, to, you'd saved all year, and you'd run down to the local general store, you know, back in the 1900s, and you ordered you a little dress, and they sent word, you know, the, the train is nothing more than the internet, Okay, it was your way to the outside world, things coming in, and things going out, and, and you saved up your money, and you ordered that dress, and then one day you heard that train blowing. Uh, you, boy, you couldn't tell me you'd get, so, you'd get dressed so quick and run down to that depot. Did it come? You'd go to that general store. Did it arrive? Did it arrive? And then I got to thinking about, you know, a time in the 1900s when you could order a house. Anybody ever heard about that? You could order a house from a Sears and Roebuck catalog, right? You could buy a chewing gum, flour, BB gun, rifle, house. <laughs> Man, you, you know, like, what, what all do they offer? But you could order a house, and look at this beautiful house. The average house would cost you like $1,000 to $1,500. And look at that. That's what we'd call a city slicker. That's a, that's a city slicker house coming in right here in our neighborhood where there's a bunch of log cabins. You know, if you were that guy that had ordered this house, and all your buddies would be like, oh, you think you're better than us, huh? I mean, you're too good to live in a, a log cabin. You want to, you, and so they would send you the shingles, the doorknobs, the windows, the flooring. And what would happen is, you know, that you could, they would, they would send it. And when it got there, you'd come and uh, you'd run up to the, you know, you could hear way off in the distance. Imagine one day you've ordered your house. You've been waiting for months. And then you start to think, man, it, when's it coming? And, oh, look, listen, can you hear the same? I hear that train. Train are coming, right, coming around. <laughs> That's where that song, I have no idea where that song came from. But, but anyway, can you imagine you're out in the field or you're working and you hear the train and you hear that sound and you immediately think, man, this, time, this thing I've been waiting on, I've been anticipating, it's almost here. And so you try to beat it down to the depot. And when you got down there, sure enough, they said, yes, it's arrived. And so they'd walk you over to this railroad car and it would be locked with a special lock and it had a wax seal around it to let everybody know that this is not to be opened by anybody but the particular owner and you got to go over there and break that seal and open up that door and there was all the lumber you are now a homeowner somebody came up to me after first service and said but somebody had to put it together <laughs> it just ain't playing a game of pickup sticks you know but but imagine that your house came like that and uh and the excitement that you would get from that good news and you know, what it would be like to think, just think in terms of, man, I've got something coming. And, 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 and you know, and then imagine you're sitting in the neighborhood, your little kids, you're outside playing, and you hear that sound. What is that? Anybody know? Woo! Man, son, you hear that sound, it's like ice cream is coming. Where's Bruce Owen? He's got to get ice cream every Friday. I missed him. He's in first service. But, you know, ice cream's coming. Anybody remember running to the house and saying, Mama, Mama, the ice cream truck, the ice cream truck. And, you know, and, and say, you got enough money. And, and, hey, can I? And I thought, as a kid, I thought, man, the ice cream truck's probably going 100 miles an hour. We got to catch him. I didn't know he was driving sub like like under a half a mile an hour because he was giving all the little kids time to wear mama and daddy out. 
You ever been a mom and daddy and the kids sitting there, can I have a can of some can of some candy, can I, 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 right? <laughs> that's what the ice cream truck did to people, but that's, a man, I love that sound. What a powerful sound, right? And then, you know, you're sitting at school. This is for me. This is my sound. I don't know what it sounds like today because it's been about 30 years. But anyway, sitting in school all day and just thinking, man, when will this be over? Oh. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's the, the alarm. School's over. Now, it's probably, they probably modernized that thing into some kind of beeping noise now. I don't, I don't even know. Do they even sound the alarm? People just leave when they want to. I, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how it works, but it was an exciting sound. And then, you know, you got home and about seven o'clock at night, you, you know, you, you, and then that phone, anybody remember that sound, that phone, that old rotary phone, you know, the old click, 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 you know, and, and then, and, you know, had a 30-foot cord. You could go all the way upstairs if you hadn't upstairs and go into the bathroom and down in the secret cubby and, what you doing? <laughs> It was a good sound. You know, I'm talking about the sound of good news and, you know, what it's like. And, and, and I'm gonna, first service missed this. I want to see if you get it right now. Knock, knock. Oh, y'all so much smarter than them. <laughs> I think we had one person go, who's there? You know, so let me do it again. Knock, knock. Company. No, for real, company. It's not a joke. <laughs> you, you remember? <laughs> People would knock on your door and be like, hey, hey, what's up? How you doing? I mean, I've heard comedians go on about this, but people show up at your house now. You want to get your gun like, what are you doing? What are you doing just showing up at my house unannounced? We got telephones, text messages, you know, Facebook, uh, Snapchat. There's so many different ways you could have told me you wanted to come. Don't just show up. But there was a time when the knock on the door was a good sound, and it was an exciting sound, and it made people happy. And then probably one of the most precious sounds I've ever heard in all my life. <laughs> yeah, all you mamas, y'all know that's one of them newborns right there. <laughs> I love Kelly. She's our, she's my wife, but she's a nursery director. We'll be in a restaurant, and we'll hear that sound, and she's like, that's a new baby. Well, she'll start looking around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing like, nothing like for that first time when you hear that sound, and you know what life has just come into the world, right? We're talking about the declaration, the joy, the joy of good news. In John 1, 23, it says this, John the Baptist quoted Isaiah. Uh, Zach mentioned it earlier. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, John was the school bell ringing at the end of the day. He was the train whistle blowing in the wilderness. He was the brand new baby that had just entered life. And he had good news. And the good news was this, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The anointed one, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the deliverer is coming. Woo! Man, the sound of good news. And so here's John the Baptist. He's the cousin of Jesus, the son of a priest named Zechariah. And Zechariah's wife, John's mother, Elizabeth, who was barren until the angel Gabriel. Can you imagine? Zechariah's just in the temple performing his duties as he has drawn a lot. It, you know, they cast lots to see who went in. And so he drew the lot, and he went in. And while he's in there, who there's an angel. Right? And the angel looks at him and starts having this conversation and says, listen, you're going to have a son, and you're going to name his name John. And it says in Luke 1, 14, this is what the angel said, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. John was a promise of joy. John was going to carry a message of joy to anyone and everyone that would listen. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Jesus is coming. Man, man, that's good. That's joyful news. And so in the sixth month of Elizabeth's term, Gabriel visited Mary and told Mary, so you're going to have a son. It's going to be called one of his name is Jesus, and he would rule and reign, and his kingdom would have no end. And so Mary went to visit Elizabeth. And Mary greeted Elizabeth, and I want to read this to you. In Luke 1, verse 41, it said, And when Elizabeth heard the greeting, 
John's, Elizabeth is pregnant with John about six months in her term. She hears the greeting of Mary. It says the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud voice, Blessed are you among women. And then she said, Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And then why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord, the mother of my Messiah, the mother of my Savior, why am I so blessed? I am full of joy that you, Mary, would come and visit me. For behold, verse 44, when the sound of your greeting, when your voice, when your lips uttered those words, that that tone, that noise, those words entered into my ears. And when they did, the baby in my womb, he leaped for joy. Man, joy to the world, for the Lord has come. He's come this morning. John the Baptist, the baby boy, overwhelmed with joy, overwhelmed at the fact that the Savior, the Messiah, was in the womb of another woman. May we never forget the joy. May we never forget the joy of just simply knowing Jesus, that in all things we can count it as joy to know him and to know that we know him and to know that he is in us. Joy to the world. Now, listen. I, I shared something with first service, and you might have heard already, and i got to share it with second service. I'm going to have to do it. I have wrestled with it. I've struggled with it. And I, one of my things, I mean, I'm, I'm just a, I try to be an honest guy, and then I, I've, I've learned not just to be honest. I've learned to be transparent, and there's a difference. Honest is, if you ask me, I'll tell you. Transparency is, I'm going to tell you whether you ask me or not. Right? I mean, I brag forever, like, hey, don't ask me, because if you, if you really want my opinion, don't ask me. I'm going to tell you. Are you sure you want to know? And like, yeah, I want to know. So they'd ask me, and then I'd tell them. Now, I'm sort of like, place, hey, I know you didn't ask for this, but. And so i got to share this, and I've wrestled with it and struggled with it. And i got to tell you if, you, you know, if you're a parent here, you might want to take cans, put on your little baby's ears. You don't want to go ahead. Some of you mamas, your wives might have to hold your husband's ear. I don't know if they're ready for the truth I'm about to put on you. But i got to say it. It's Christmas, and we need truth. Somebody say amen. you got to have some truth. So here it goes. The song, Joy to the World. The song, Joy to the World, it's not a Christmas song. Did you know that? <laughs> man, I, I, did I make some? Y'all got quiet. Was y'all expecting me to say something else? <laughs> Is there some other truth we need around the Christmas? Is something? <laughs> Joy to the world is not a Christmas song. Man, I'm telling you, I stressed out about that for a little while. So I, I, I just, the song was written by a man by the name of Isaac Watts. And uh, he is accredited for 750 hymns. That's a lot of songs, okay? Uh, so you probably haven't heard of all of them. Maybe you've heard of the, one of the, the most famous ones, and that's When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And when I survey, you know that song? That, he wrote that one, and we sang it this morning. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Right? And so though he, he wrote Joy to the World, but it was not written for the baby in a manger. It was not written for Mary's going to have a child and his name will be Jesus. It was written as a song that had in view the second coming of Jesus. It was written with the eyes looking at the fact that Jesus was coming again. So Joy to the World is a hymn, I want to say it like this, that's undercover as a Christmas song. It's <laughs> but it's a powerful song. And I don't disagree with us singing it at Christmas. I think we could sing it all year long. But it was based on Psalms 98. And I want to read some of it to you. Chapter 98, verse 4, it says, Shout for joy to the Lord. All the earth burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, the harp with the harp, and with the sound of singing with trumpets and the blast of a ram's horn. Shout for joy. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world, in it, the world and all who live it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the mountains sing together. Somebody say it with me. For joy. You know what's terrible is people who say, joy to the world. You ever met somebody like that? 
Have you ever heard this? I'm a Christian. I might want to tell somebody. <laughs> Man, you know what? I believe I believe that the joy of the Lord is contagious. I believe it's infectious. I believe that when you have the joy of the Lord, I believe that when you know Him, that you know who holds your tomorrow, that there's something inside of you that people actually want. There's something inside of you that people want to be close to. They want to talk to you. They want to, they say, hey, come here. You're drawing people like, you know, like Mama's um, uh, pecan pie. It's a good oath, like, come to me, right? And that is what God wants us to walk in, the joy of the Lord. So, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Come on. Let receive her king. One more time. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven. Come on. And heaven. Yeah, go ahead and give yourself a hand, will you? So today I'm preaching the great news, the great tidings of a great joy that Jesus came and he was born and laid in a manger, right? He grew up. He became the appropriation for our sins. He died. He was crucified on a tree. He went down into death and hell, defeated grave and defeated sin, and then came out and resurrected and sits on the right hand of the Father. And one day he is going to return again to get his bride. Joy to the world. <laughs> hey. We can go home now. That's good. That was good. So let's sing joy to the world in January, February, March, April, May, June, <laughs> July, August, September, October, November. And I guess we'll sing it in December too. You know what I'm saying? Like, why not? Why not? So what is the good news? The good news is Jesus came. He defeated sin. He defeated death. And he returned to his father, and he's coming back again. Luke chapter 2 says this in verse 10. He was talking to the shepherds. An angel appeared to them and said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news. Fear not. Anybody need some good news this morning? Fear not, because I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Somebody say all. All people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. For unto you is born a Deliverer. For unto you is born a Healer. For unto you is born Christ the Lord. It's good news. Shout to joy. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. John the Apostle. John of Patmos. John the Elder. Of John, the beloved disciple, however you want to refer to him, was on the island of Patmos when he was given the revelation of Jesus Christ. And in Revelations chapter 7, verse, uh, verse 9 and 10, I want to read to you. He had just had written, if you want to go read the whole chapter, he had just written about the 12,000 members of each tribe of Israel. So 144,000 people. And then it says, and then as I looked, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number. That word number is arrhythmio. It's where we get our word arithmetic. So John says, I looked and behold, I saw a number of people that no one could arithmetize. That's not a word, okay. And no one, no one could, has the capacity, has enough arithmetic. You don't have the ability to count how many people I saw standing at there from every nation, every tribe, peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying with a loud voice, salvation. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Man, that's, I'm going to tell you, Jesus tells his disciples, he says, do not two sparrows cost a penny. Basically, they're cheap. It's, it doesn't cost a lot of money to buy two sparrows. And then he makes this promise, but not one sparrow will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. Now, think about that. The very hairs, he says this next, the very hairs on your head are numbered. If you have any, but they're numbered. I'm y'all forgive me. I didn't. I, 
I got some friends I was giving a hard time to. I might have gave somebody else a hard time. Didn't even know. Y'all forgive me, Lord. But the very heads on your hair, the very, <laughs> the very hairs on your head are numbered. And then he says, you are far worth more than many sparrows. God knows how to count. You believe that? He knows how to count and he knows how to manage numbers. And Jesus tells the story of how he left, what, the 99 righteous to go find the one lost sheep. That tells us the heart of God. His message is powerful. How many is he willing to leave behind? The answer is none. He left the 99 to go get the one. So in the revelation of Jesus, John sees a crowd that no man could number. No man possesses the arithmetic skills to count the crowd standing before the throne. So that kind of got me stirred up. Anybody like math? I can't see you, but glory to God, you're the first person. Maybe one or two. I, my eyes and these lights, but I, I love math. I love math. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I mean, you say whatever you want to say about me, but I love math. Now, there are people in this room who could talk the language of math in a way that I cannot. All right, so, But I love numbers. I do. And so when I get around numbers, I start thinking about them. And so as I was thinking about this, you know, this throne of people that no man could number, I'm like, what's the largest group of people that we've ever had on planet Earth? What's the largest gathering? Any guesses? No, a million, two million, three million? All right, how about this? I want to show you a picture of this. This is five million people in attendance of World Youth Day. That's a big crowd. <laughs> five million. So, I just, you know, every time I see this picture, a number that no man could number, I would have said that crowd I imagine probably looked like that. But that's only five million. There's more, okay? And so this next picture I want to show you is six million people gathered for the Pope. That's a pretty big crowd, <laughs> right? And the next one I want to show you is a festival in Iraq. It's 17 million people. Look at them through the streets around, not just a city block, many city blocks, okay? 17 million people, and that's not the largest one. The largest gathering known to date, the largest one known to date, is 30 million people. On, I'm not, I'm not going to say this right. The Mela or Mela pilgrimage in India. Look, it just keeps going. That, that farthest thing about there, just there's people times people. 30 million. But John saw a number that no one could number. <laughs> Man, I tell you, when I, when I got that in my, you could take all those pictures and put them together, and it's still just a small percentage of the people that John saw standing around the throne of God crying out, Worthy. So you may not prefer to be in crowds, or you may prefer not to be in crowds, and that's okay. And you might struggle to connect with large churches, that's okay. Nobody's upset about that, but I just want you to know, you already, as a believer in Christ, a part of the most, the largest group of people to ever hit planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead. that's right. What am I saying? There's room. There's room. There's room for our neighbors. There's room for our brothers. There's room for our mamas. There's room for our daddies. There's room for that person that cussed you out this morning. There's room for that person that cut you off. There's room for that person that stole from you. There's room for that person that lied about you. There's room for that person that hates you this morning. There's room at the foot of the cross for them. There's hope and joy in that this morning that God sent his only son. And so they were standing, this crowd will be standing, worshiping the Lamb of God. It will be the largest gathering ever known in the universe, as far as we know, right? Jesus will stand before the Father victoriously and with a crowd that no man could number. So that's great news of great joy. And so here I just got to thinking, I got to do a little digging, I got to ask some questions. And so I did. I was like, hey, do we have an estimate on how many people who have ever lived on planet Earth, born into the human race? And guess what? They estimated the number. They went back and it started with Adam and Eve and multiplied all the way up to the flood. And then they started back over again. And you know what they estimate? They estimate that there's been 117 billion people born in the human race. That's a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people. And that, this is a study done in 2021. And that same year, they estimated there was 7.88 billion billion people on the planet 
And they also did another survey on that same year, 2021, 2.38 billion of the 7.8 billion actually claimed the name of Christ. So that means 30% of the population in the world in 2021 would claim some sort of association with the name Jesus. If averages are true, then we can say out of the 117 billion that have been born from the beginning, that really about 35 billion of them named the name of Christ. And possibly the number standing around the throne at 2021 would have been 35 billion compared to the largest one we've ever had on earth, 30 million. But I'm not real satisfied with those numbers, and I don't really, I kind of, you know, I've got some other things. The Scripture says this, uh, and this is the problem I have with that 30% ratio. The Scripture says, uh, in one passage it says there'll be two in the bed. One will be taken and one left. And then it said there'll be two in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. And if we just went by that alone, it implies a 50% ratio, a 50% success rate that 50% of all humans may possibly claim the name of Christ and follow him. And so 50% of 117 billion might be sitting at the throne worshiping the Lamb of God. That's over 54 billion billion people standing before the throne of God crying out, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the one who can open the scroll. Can you imagine? Now here's the harsh reality of that. If we agreed on a 50% number, if we just all got in the room, and I don't think we would, just said, you know what, I think Jesus would be happy with a 50% success rate, then we would have to acknowledge that 2.38 billion is only 30% of the population, not 50. It means that we're missing 1.54 billion people when it comes to the body of Christ if we agree to a 50% ratio. What's that mean? Well, if we agreed on that, it means that there's a revival of 1.54 billion people waiting to happen. What? What? And somehow we can get distracted fighting over the carpet and the lighting and the audio and the sound and the cold and the heat and everything else while there's 1.54 billion people ready to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I don't like 50%. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I, these are all just numbers. I'm having a conversation with you. What do you think? I don't know. Here's what 2 Peter 3, 9 says this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. What promises? That he was going to come and take us away. What promises? That he was going to deliver us from this world. The promise that he was our Savior, our Messiah. Those are big promises. The Lord is not slack. He hasn't forgotten. He hasn't delayed. But he is long-suffering toward who? Us. It says in 2 Peter 3, 9. He's not slack concerning his promises as men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us us word because he is not willing that that word any should perish but that all should come to repentance the Lord's long suffering his patient means is patience it means salvation for more you might say man Lord I just want it all to end today come back today listen there's people to be reached there's a revival to be had. There's souls to be saved. There's a gospel to be preached around the world to people who have never heard it. Joy to the world. A Savior has been born. So I believe Jesus is looking for more than 50%. Matter of fact, I could argue he's looking for 99% because he left 100%, excuse me, because he left the 99 to go find the one to make it what? 100. <laughs> Peter follows up and says in the day of the Lord, listen, just don't forget that the day of the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. 
Don't forget this, he said, but the day of the Lord, when he returns, it will overtake people like a thief in the night. So then Peter says, let us live a spotless life that is pleasing to the Lord. And I want to say to you this morning, if you hear me, turn away from the wickedness of living a life that is self-serving. Turn away from the wickedness of preferring yourself above others. Let's turn away from the wickedness of ignoring people in their needs while we lavish ourselves and all the things that we desire. Let's surrender to Christ the only one who can deliver and save. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, thank you. So shout for joy, all the earth. Right? Joy to the world. I bring you good news of great joy unto you, unto you, and unto you, and unto you, and unto every liar, unto every thief, unto every robber, unto every fornicator, unto every man, woman, boy, girl, child who has ever sinned. There has been a Savior who has come. He's born, and he's here to set you free. Revelation 5, I'm, I'm going to close in just a minute. I'll be transitioning, and we're going to end the service in worship. I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals in Revelation 5, 2, and open the scroll. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside. And he says, John wept. Listen, uh, the promise of a Savior in a manger that came that we're celebrating uh, this week, the joy of that Savior. Why is there joy in that? Because I, I, I want, we're skipping a few chapters, right? Let's go to the end and look at the end. And this is the result that we're going to be a part of, right? He said, I saw that John wept. He said, because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look inside. And then it said, then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. And then he points, I believe he pointed and said, see, the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? The root of David. He has triumphant, right? He has won the battle. He has been able to open the scroll and its seven seals. And then it says in verse 6, I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And then verse 7, he says, He went and he took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures, creatures and 24 elders fell down before the lamb each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of God's people verse 9 and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and every language and people from every nation you have made them to be a kingdom and priest to serve our God and they will reign on the earth somebody say amen right and then we continue in verse 11 he said then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels listen there's not just going to be a number that no man could number if it's 54 billion if it's 100 billion if it's 116 billion I don't know how many will be standing around the throne of God but we will not be the only ones standing there right there's angels it says angels were gathered around circled around it said thousands upon thousands and ten thousands times ten thousands and they encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders and in a loud voice they were saying worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise in verse 13 he said then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that's in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever amen somebody say joy to the world <laughs> joy to the world Jesus came he came listen I, he came to, to the earth as a baby in a manger he defeated sin defeated death and was crucified and he resurrected he now sits at the right hand of the father and he's coming back again He's coming. I want to challenge you as you sing this song. You hear this song, Joy to the World. I don't want you just to picture a wonderful story, an amazing story, the most amazing story. Don't just picture that Jesus is laid in swaddling clothes in a manger. But I want you to picture that there's a triumphant king who knows you, who loves you, who gave his life for you. And he is on his way back for who? You. 
And so when you sing joy to the world, there's joy in your soul because you know there's room at the cross. There's room for you today. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Yeah, thank you, Tricia. <laughs> I want to say I thank the Lord that our deliverance, that our freedom, that our salvation does not depend on what we do. It doesn't depend on what you can muster up this morning. You can think to yourself, I'm going to get it right. No, you can't. You can't get it right. You don't have what it takes. The next time you look in the mirror, and maybe that old self-talk's telling you, you know what, you're not worthy. Who do you think you are? You don't deserve. You don't need. Look that guy in the mirror. Look that lady in the mirror and say, you know, you are right. I don't deserve it. I can't earn it. There's nothing I've ever done. I've never been good enough to get it. But by some miracle, by something outside of me, there was a God who saw me in my condition, who loves me, and he sent the only one who was worthy. And when you get that connection, you fall right there on your knees and you lift him up and say, worthy is the lamb. (laughs) Worthy is the lamb. Salvation, it it doesn't depend on a preacher standing behind the pulpit, although God uses it. Salvation doesn't depend on mama or daddy or grandma or grandpa. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus Christ, the one and only resurrected, begotten Son of the Father. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. So I've asked the band just for a minute. I want to end. And we're going to end a few minutes early, but I just want to end in song. I want Summer to come and sing that chorus, that song again. If you would, your name. And we're going, to sing, we're, we're going to sing that, and we're going to sing joy to the world. But when we sing joy to the world, I'm going to invite you. I want you to sing it. Sing it like you remember who you were. <laughs> sing it like you remember where you came from. <laughs> sing it like you haven't forgot the mess of your life without him. Sing it like you're desperate to know that there's a Jesus who cares about you, right? That's how we're going to end today, all right? Come on, Summer, sing it, yeah. Everlasting Father. Yeah, come on, sing it with the wind. Let this house just be a place of worship. Come Emmanuel, on. God with us, you're here. Yeah, come on. Me. Surrender to him. Surrender to him. Wonderful he alone is worthy. The government he is resting on your shoulders. Come on, son. He's worthy. Jesus. Jesus. You are an everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us, you're here right here with me, wonderful Counselor, the government is resting on the shoulders. You see that verse, you're the truest friend. You are the truest friend. You are the truest yeah. friend. Woo. Come on. Staying through the night when I was at my end. Yeah, come on, sing it, sing it. Comforted my heart till it felt like. I said, today's the day. Oh, this is a faithful kind of love. We give it all to you, Lord. Yes, it is. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us. Sing it, Zach. Sing it. Come on, sing it. We bless you, Lord. Wonderful. We bless you. The God of man is rest. Jesus. Be sure. I am too. I am too. I'm resting on your shoulders, God. Oh, Lord, I I am am too. 
Come on, sing that next part. Your name says it all. Your name. Sing your names. Come on, sing it. Messiah. Your name Counselor. Mighty God. Prince of Peace. Lord of Lords. King of Kings. Jesus. Jesus. That's it. All over this room. Come on. All over this room. I'm confessing my faith in your names and who you are. I'm, conf- I'm professing and professing. Sing that one more time, everlasting, right? Come on, don't be ashamed. Let it come out of your mouth. Come on. Let today be the day of change. Celebrate Jesus, will you? Come on, count us off, Oscar. We're going to sing this joy to the world, and we're going to leave, right? This is, this is our exit song. But we got to sing it with all our heart. Come on, everybody up to your feet. Zach, you ready? Come on. Joy. 